we're going to have one tape that's going to construct different paths through this machine, through this tree, excuse me. And the paths we're going to construct will be in order of their length, starting with paths of length 1, and then paths of length 2, and then paths of length 3, etc. So here's what one tape is going to be. We have four choices of length 1. We can either go here, 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 or here. So in order, we would generate these numbers on that tape. 1, and then subsequently 2, and then subsequently 3, and then 4. Every time we generate a number, we do a lot of work. I generate this number 1. I now go ahead and simulate my non-deterministic Turing machine making choice number 1. And I s check to see if I'm in an accepting state. If I am, I stop and I'm done. If I'm not, go back to this tape and update it. Make it 2. Go back now and start your simulation again from the very beginning. Where are we going to do this simulation? We need another tape. The simulation is going to be done on this tape. This tells us how to simulate. We always start from scratch, blanking out the tape again, starting the simulation from scratch. This tells us what path to take in our simulation. So when we're done with all the paths of length 1, when I go 1, 2, 3, 4, what do I generate on this tape next? What tells us how many steps into it we get? Are you just doing a single? This tape tells us. Tells There's us only a single digit on this tape. That tells us which of the multiple branches to, to accept, right? Oh, oh, there's one. Then there's blank after that. When there's a blank, you stop your simulation. So what's the next stage that I want to do? I want to simulate two-step computations. So, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4. 16 possible, and you can see those 16 things here, 4 times 4, 16 possible paths of length 2. Try them all. If any of them succeed, you're done. If they don't succeed, back to the drawing board, update this. I want to end with figuring out how much time this takes. The book, I, I know, has a very detailed explanation of this, too, so you can look at it in, in its formal way. But let's think intuitively how much time it takes, because this is the P versus NP question. What we're doing now is simulating a non-deterministic machine by a deterministic machine. How long is this taking us? Let's say this non-deterministic machine has a path from here down to an accepting state, and this path is length n. In a Turing machine, and this gets into complexity theory, but it's an easy definition, so don't turn your head off on me yet. If it's a deterministic machine, how much time does it take to accept a string? It's the number of configurations you go to, the number of steps in the Turing machine, the number of states that you enter in that diagram. So if it takes, if your input was length n and it takes n squared steps, then it's n squared time. Just count the number of states you go to. In a non-deterministic machine, how do we measure how much time it takes? We don't count all of these and add them all up. We just count the path to the one we want. That's how non-determinism saves you time. It kind of does them all in parallel. We only count the time it takes us to do the one that works. So the time this non-determinism takes to get to this state is n. How long does it take our deterministic machine to get there? It's got to look at every single path through this tree. How many paths are there through this tree? As many leaves as there are at the bottom of the tree. How many leaves are there at the bottom of a tree that branches four times? Go take a discrete math course and ask somebody, and they'll tell you it's 4 to the n, more or less. It's horrible. It's exponential. It's terrible. And where does the 4 come from? It's some constant number that comes from where? The, no the maximum number of choices you have in the non-determinism. So that's fixed. It's a constant number. But, you know, whatever it is, and in fact, you could rewrite the machine so that's always 2. Right? You could just move it to, to other intermediate steps that, that split up the 8 choices into, into, into sets of 2 choices and binary out. So you can let that down at the expense of more states in the machine, but it's never going to get less than 2. So you get a simulation of 4 to the n. And this is what Mike Sipser was talking about and what 
dozens of people would love to know, is there a better way to do the simulation? Nobody thinks that there's any way to do the simulation that beats exponentiation. And everybody wants to understand, is there some way that I could convince you of that? Is there some way that I could prove to you that no matter what way I try to simulate this non-deterministic computation with a deterministic one, no matter how I try, am I just stuck getting exponentiation and nobody can prove that, at least today. And that's what the whole theory of MP completeness is about. We can't prove it, but at least we could say that, hey, if you could, these problems you know, could be done quickly and stuff like that. But nobody can distinguish those two classes. We don't know if P and NP are different. Yeah? So there are things, Turing machines can go exponential on problems that more powerful computers won't? Turing machines can go exponential on yeah. problems that more powerful computers won't, right. meaning non-deterministic computers. No, no, everything, a Turing machine can do everything that any of our computers can do. Yes. But in order to do it, it might have to do it might have to not be algorithmically efficient. Oh, actually, is that the case? no. no. Um, Turing machines can simulate random access machines with a polynomial time slowdown. It doesn't take exponential work to simulate a random access memory. Right. It no, takes. It, it, it takes. It, take, it, it takes some time. It slows you down. It certainly slows you down. In general, your Turing machine simulations are going to be paid for by various. Uh, metrics of speed. Mm -hmm. But usually they don't end up being exponential. Okay. None of these other things were exponential. Simulating K tapes was not exponential. Simulating two-way infinity was not exponential. 